So this is an open SCAD tutorial for jewelers. I know that the CAD packages can be a little intimidating, especially with all the math involved when uh, you get rid of the graphic user interface. But bear with me. We're going to go to openscad.org. We're going to download the appropriate open SCAD file for your Mac or Linux or whatever you've got. But be sure to click the cheat sheet button here. Click and make sure you have a copy of this available because as you start doing functions, the more complicated they get, the easier it is to use these functions to do basic math. Uh, we're gonna start out at the beginning though with just a simple primitive where if we type cylinder, close the parentheses, and add a semicolon, a semicolon, we should get an object. And so this is the simplest it can render, which is a tiny pentagon. And we're going to pass it more and more information. But when you're learning a programming language, it's sort of like learning a language from someone whose only phrases of your language are no and you're doing it wrong. So what I like about OpenSCAD is you can actually um, fumble around with the whole thing and just check your work as you go. So now we wrote center equals true, and now the object is centered on the origin. We can pass it some more information like the height is going to be let's say six millimeters and the radius is going to be uh, 13 millimeters but since this is the radius that's going to be times two normally we measure diameter so we're going to write 13 over two okay. and there is our cylinder so once you get to that point you can then start doing mathematical functions like cutting away material from the first object. So we write difference, open and close parentheses, and then a curly brace. And then what that'll do is take this first object, and that'll be the defining object, and we can copy and paste that and make a smaller object below it. So something that is a smaller diameter, like 11 millimeters. And you can see when the surfaces are coplanar, there's a little bit of an issue here uh, mathematically. So we're going to extend height just a little bit more so that we can cut through the cylinder. Okay, And there's a basic band ring. Right? Very simple. So as you get better and better at writing your code, right? this is very rudimentary but it's a band ring and you can print that off and make hundreds of these very easily, you can get a little lazier. And so what I've already done is pre-draft some code where instead of putting in numbers I've just described what the part is. Okay. And I've put it in what's called the module. And the module allows me to call the function ring blank and make a ring. Okay, So here we are with our first ring. And the only problem is before I did this, I forgot to take the entire dimension, right, because it's a radius, and divide it by 2. So you always want to remember when you're measuring your radius, when we're measuring ring size, it's usually the width of someone's finger. So we're measuring the diameter, which is radius times two. Okay. So there we go. That is our appropriate sized ring. And the nice part is when we call out width, ring size, or thickness, we can input those dimensions and say, I want my band ring to be nine millimeters wide, or I want my band ring to be three millimeters wide and uh, perhaps the diameter should be 19 because I need it to be bigger for one reason or another. Now, when you're going to find out this object fails is when you pass the resolution, right, the face number here. Uh, you can pass a number very, very small, 4, and you get a square. And that's okay, but most people's fingers are not cubes. So it would make more sense to define this interior diameter, right? This is the interior of the ring, we might want to make that round and just say instead of it being defined as a resolution, it's actually always going to be at minimum a hundred faces, which makes for a very smooth circle. But when you do that, all of a sudden the ring collapses. And so I like using the pound function to find my object and go, okay, so there's a square there, that's fine but maybe it needs to be bigger. And so if you want to make a square ring, you can just say, okay, well, the ring size here needs to be actually larger than I thought. 
and I will just enter in 25 for my square. And because of the way that affects the model in both, both senses, you end up with this problem of, well, okay, now I need to do some math, and it's actually, you know, this number times the square root of 2, right? That's the hypotenuse of a square. And then you can get a square ring with a circular hole. And that works as well. But that requires a little more math. This is a simple basic object. We're not going to get too excited about it, but we're going to leave it so that, I don't know, it works relatively well. And I think we can solve that by just adding a little bit of thickness. Okay, So it's a little more substantial and uh, we can do something down to a triangle and we get a failure, but a pentagon should be fine. Okay, So that's a basic ring blank and I think that's a pretty good starting point. This will get posted on Thingiverse, and uh, you can have fun with that. But one thing I should clarify is when you define your, your variables, right, the width of the ring is listed here, and then there's an equal sign with a number. And that's because if you ever go to the file and no one puts in any information, sometimes it's nice for them to just hit render, and they get a band ring, and they understand that the, the function works, but you could also pass it information and say like my band ring is supposed to be 7 wide by 19 uh, for the interior diameter uh, that's my ring size and then I'd like it to be maybe 4 millimeters thick because I want a beefy ring and I'm thinking like a heptagon would be a good look and then you have that option. So there it is, quick and dirty um, <laughs> ring blank demo. <laughs>